Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The International Energy Agency underlined how the world is moving into the age of electricity when releasing its latest World Energy Outlook. Terence Screamer joins me to unpack what this means. Hi, Terence. Hi, oh, Chanel. Electricity has been part of the energy system for more than 100 years. What does the IEA mean by the age of electricity? Yes, it almost seems disingenuous, but actually what it means is there's this energy services that are currently served through fossil fuels, oil and gas. And as we decarbonize the energy system, the quickest way to decarbonize is to electrify. And so there's a, there's a displacement of those services from oil and gas and uh, a replacement with electricity. So electricity is now growing for the last more than 10 years at twice the pace of all the other energy sources and it's set in the next 10 years to grow at six times that pace. And uh, this is underpinned by this massive um, investment in renewable energy, variable, mostly variable renewable energy, wind and solar PV mostly. And that's picking up further pace and accelerating. And uh, so that's going to be the trend. So by 2030, 50% of all electricity produced worldwide is going to be from clean sources. Obviously not all wind and solar, there's also nuclear and hydro in that mix, and nuclear is growing. But uh, uh, mostly it's coming from wind and solar. These variable sources are going to be the, the big source of electricity supply globally. And by 2035, two thirds um, of all electricity is gonna be supplied by clean sources. So this is the trend, it's embedded. And there's going to be an electrification of almost everything. So we know that electric vehicles, are be, you know, that's displacing the internal combustion engine. We know indirectly as well, electricity is going to be used to produce green hydrogen. So that can be used in green steel, etc. So both direct electricity use. So in other countries, not so much in South Africa, you know, warm heating doesn't come from electricity. There's going to be electric geysers or heat pumps. Uh, there's going to be electric stoves because a lot of countries they still don't use electricity to produce uh, to cook their food. So there's going to be this electricity electrification of many many services, and then there's also new growth areas. There's AR, which has d demands these big data sensors, which are energy electricity hungry. So those are also new sources of demand that are added to the displacement demand and replacement demand, and now also new sources of demand. So electricity. This is the age of electricity where uh, electri there's an electrification of almost everything and there's also a new source of demand to support AI and data centers. The IEA also says the critical minerals demand associated with this coming age holds opportunities for Africa. Yes, so uh, this, uh, um, this move to electrification is metals and minerals intensive. So, you know, the, the previous age, coal, oil, you know, gas, those were the sort of dominant uh, sources that people were looking to for mobility, for instance. So there was a lot of exploration development for that. Now, as we move into an electric age, we need more critical minerals. These are things like copper, cobalt, nickel, graphite, lithium. Lithium very much in the, the batteries for battery storage as well as for electric vehicles. And the analysis done is that there's a gap, even post recycling, there's a gap in supply. Uh, so there's, there's no binding constraint, for instance, solar and wind. There's a lot of um, factories that have been built mostly in China that are outpacing the, 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 the deployment of solar and wind panels and, and turbines. But the minerals that go into that, um, into those factories, there's, a, there's a potential gap, even post recycling. So there's going to have to be new mine production. And this is where Africa could come in. We know that, for instance, DRC is a big mining province, particularly for um, uh, cobalt and copper. So we already see a lot of activity happening there. There's this new Libito corridor. Uh, not, not that it's a new corridor, but it's a new investment going into that corridor to, uh, as the mine, uh, those copper and cobalt are mined, they can go into markets, particularly in the West. So it will go out through Angola, so there's a lot of act action around that. But we're going to see a lot more mine exploration and development in Africa, and a lot more mining uh, of these critical minerals. 
and the infrastructure associated with that. So there's an opportunity here for Africa to, to align itself with this energy transition, this electrification transition. But obviously it comes with risks, as we know, um, over the years, mining hasn't uh, always uh, done, it's done it in a socially responsible way. And uh, the, the, the benefits of the revenue that come from mining haven't been spread necessarily into society. So I think that's going to be the important thing here. There's an opportunity, but can the, the benefits from that opportunity be spread throughout society is going to be the, the key question. What does this trend mean for South Africa? So South Africa is in a, in a sweet spot here because we have wind and solar resources and land that uh, are better than the resources elsewhere. So we should theoretically, as the world decarbonizes using variable renewable electricity, our variable renewable electricity will be cheaper than anywhere else or than most countries. Not than anywhere else because there are other jurisdictions that have similar advantages such as Australia, such as part of Latin America, parts of North America. But we are in a sweet spot to produce, to attract electricity intensive investments. So data centers being a big opportunity down the line. Now it seems crazy to even be talking like this because we are at the moment an electricity short country because of our poor management of our electricity system. But but as the electricity age dawns, there's a huge opportunity for South Africa actually to use its land, its sun and its wind much more effectively to, bring, to produce one electricity that will be cheaper than anywhere else and, then to, and also to industrialize around that. So make components for wind and solar for the grids that are going to be necessary because that's a big gap around the world, not only in South Africa, grids are a big gap. So we can produce here yeah, those manufactured components but we can also attract electricity intensive investment. So that will <laughs> raise eyebrows, no doubt, because we've, th we've seen that story before. You know, when we had abundant coal, uh, cheap coal, we attracted things like aluminum smelters and things like that. And, and now those companies are having to get special deals on the side to stay viable. But in this new world, yes, electricity prices are going up generally around the world, but relatively, we can, cheap, we can produce electricity cheaper. And that's a big industrial policy uh, and investment policy opportunity, one that I don't think our policymakers have necessarily got their head around, but there are opportunities, not just the smelters that we must try and keep and retain, and maybe, but the, the ARs, uh, the green hydrogens, we can also produce. So we need to get our industrial policy around this. Electric vehicles, we see there's some movement there but it's not been fast enough, but there's some signals this week that the president gave that I think are important around EVs. Then the, uh, the green hydrogen opportunity, we're starting to develop some uh, um, projects and policy around that, but still a long way to go, and it's been very slow. But we need to invest in this wind and solar at much higher scale to really take advantage of that opportunity. And that's where the grid has become a constraint and we need to find our way around using what grid we have much more efficiently. We haven't been, we haven't even been using a curtailment framework properly, but then also building out the grid so that we can really start taking advantage of this electric age opportunity that is starting to dawn. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.